Hello, my name is John Reynolds. I'm Professor of Surgery at Trinity College, Dublin and St. James's Hospital. I'm a member of a multidisciplinary team located between St. James's and St. Luke's Hospital in Dublin that looks after approximately 200 new patients each year faced with a diagnosis of esophageal cancer. The goal of this presentation is to inform new patients and their families of key elements of the treatment involved in esophageal cancer. This may involve major surgery and it may also involve the administration of chemotherapy and radiation therapy. Um, my name is Declan Byrne. I was diagnosed with esophageal cancer in September 2000. And the very first reaction I, I had was the use of the term cancer. It has such terrible connotations. You know, I felt that this was a death sentence. And it was a very traumatic uh, time for myself and my family coming to terms with the whole notion that I could have cancer. Once you get over that initial shock, and, and it absolutely was a massive shock personally, and for, for my family, as I said, you then begin to think, you know, what chances have I got and what form and shape the treatment will take. We know a lot more uh, about the exact, you know, uh, prediction of, of uh, survival possibility for a patient once all the treatment is completed and the operation has been done and what we remove has been analyzed under the microscope by my colleagues in, in pathology. So we know a lot more at that time. But it's, it's, it's impossible for me on day one, like this, when we, when we meet, to be actually to be able to say to a patient, this is the percentage chance that we, you, we can cure you. We just can't, we can't do that. My name is Jenny Moore and I'm the Upper GI Cancer Nurse with Professor Reynolds and his team. Our aim for you and your family for the next few months is to get you through this treatment pathway in the least amount of distress as possible. As you will be meeting a lot of new people who are experts in providing your care, I hope to be a constant link throughout that journey. All patients with a diagnosis of esophageal cancer will undergo staging. Staging will determine whether the disease is localized to the esophagus and maybe the surrounding lymph glands or whether there has been any further spread. Staging will include for everybody a CAT scan and a PET scan and for many patients another endoscopy which is combined with ultrasound known as an endoscopic ultrasound. Every patient with suspected or diagnosed esophageal cancer will be discussed at a multidisciplinary team meeting and a consensus recommendation for their management will come out of this meeting. In our experience, for every 100 patients that we are referred with esophageal cancer, approximately 50 will have disease localized to the esophagus or surrounding glands and will be suitable for a treatment that is designed to obtain a cure if that is achievable. Within that 50% of patients, approximately half will be offered chemotherapy or more usually chemotherapy combined with radiation therapy before the operation and the other half will just have the operation alone. Chemotherapy forms part of the trimodology treatment of resectable uh, esophageal cancer. The chemotherapy is given by an intravenous drip as an inpatient with radiation treatment prior to surgery. The chemotherapy is administered either in St. James's or St. Luke's hospitals. And the patients, if they're in St. James's hospital, travel daily to St. Luke's for radiotherapy whilst getting the chemotherapy. And if they're in St. Luke's, they have both treatments given uh, at that site. After completion of the radiotherapy, the patient has a gap and approximately a week or two later, will come back in to St. James's hospital for a second cycle of chemotherapy 
which lasts approximately seven days. When the patients come into hospital for further treatment, they're seen by an oncology nurse who explains all the side effects of therapy to them. And these side effects include things such as nausea and vomiting, risks of infection, and sometimes risks of bleeding. A number of weeks after completing the second cycle of chemotherapy, the patient is reassessed for fitness for surgery. Patients will generally attend St Luke's for their first visit within one to two weeks of being seen at St James's Hospital and most of the important information that we need in terms of scans will have been undertaken at St James's including CT scan, PET CT scan and the endoscopy which will have been part of the initial workup of the patient. When they come to St Luke's there are a relatively small number of procedures that need to be undertaken before they can start treatment. Most specifically what they require is a process called simulation and that requires the patient to have a specialised form of x-ray where they will swallow some barium contrast and also they will require a CT scan and both of these tests give us the information that we need to map out the location and the technical way in which we will give the treatment and that process actually requires a couple of days work and that's why there is a gap of around one week between attending the hospital for simulation and ultimately starting treatment. The treatment itself is relatively simple for most patients. It requires 15 treatments over a three week period being treated Monday to Friday and per day it takes in the order of about 15 minutes. It's a comfortable treatment process with the patient simply lying on their back on a treatment couch and they should be aware of nothing else other than some machine movement and perhaps some machine noise but the patient should really have no other significant inconvenience or symptoms associated with the treatment on a daily basis. Towards the end of the treatment some patients do experience some mild discomfort on swallowing and also some fatigue but this clears within a very short time after completion of the radiation course. On arrival at St Luke's with the radiation I have to be honest and say that the radiation to me was was very very straightforward. Uh, the facility itself is really conducive to peace and, you know, nice atmosphere. Uh, the radiation was conducted over a three-week period. Uh, the first week is probably quite difficult in that the first week of my treatment, you're doing chemotherapy and radiation. And the chemotherapy lasts 12-hour cycle, um, and then you finish the cycle, you have a shower, and then you get in a taxi, you come to St. Luke's, you have your radiation, and then you go back and you repeat that for seven days. The following two weeks is probably more straightforward. I came actually as an outpatient. I came up and down every day for the following two weeks and uh, the radiation was, was quite straightforward. I had some uh, feelings of tiredness but no major side effects, no sickness and mostly the, the routine you know, went, went to plan. Having gone through the combined therapy of radiation and chemotherapy, you know, the wonderful news that I had prior to surgery was that the, the tumour had reduced in size approximately 60% and I felt it was really worthwhile, you know, to have gone through all of that and uh, I felt uh, quite uh, set up, if you will, for surgery. This is the operating theatre, or, the, or the operating room, as it's sometimes called. To my right is the preparation area where we uh, scrub up and we gown uh, before surgery. The duration of surgery is between four and a half to six hours. And the operation is usually performed by the senior surgeon with a senior surgical uh, trainee and a senior nurse, a scrub nurse. You may have heard the terms two-stage and three-stage operations and I'll try and explain to you simply what that means. Two-stage means that for us to do your surgery, a cut, 
or an incision is going to be required in the belly or abdomen and also an incision or cut required in the right side of the chest. We do that operation where the cancer is in the lower part of the esophagus or at the junction between the esophagus and stomach. A three-stage operation means simply that in addition to a requirement for a cut in the abdomen and in the chest, a third cut is required, a small one, in the left side of the neck. And we require the three incision or three-stage operation where the cancer is located in the middle of the esophagus or the upper part of the esophagus. You know, a lot of the thing as I went through this was kind of the, the mental approach. You know, you have a physical condition, of course, that you have to fix, but a lot of it was trying to build and maintain mental strength and a kind of a, a positive attitude to what you're going through. Um, as you can imagine, from the very first outset, the term cancer sets all the worst possible signals. Um, but as I gone through the treatment, I realized that. Um, you know, in this particular cancer, with my fortunate early diagnosis, that I had a pretty good chance of coming out of this alive. When the patient is sent for for theatre, they will be escorted on a patient trolley by the ward nurse and the, the theatre attendant. On arrival, they will be taken into the reception area where they will be checked in for surgery by the reception nurse and then again by the anaesthetic nurse. It is important that these checks are carried out in order to ensure that we have the correct patient for the correct operation. When the theatre is then ready for the patient to come down to the anaesthetic room, a nurse will go up to the holding bay. They will actually go through all the checks again to make sure that nothing has been missed out on the ward. They will then bring the patient down to the anaesthetic room. Hi, I'm Dr. Niall Hughes. I'm one of the consultant anaesthetists in St. James's Hospital. I've been working closely with Professor Reynolds for the last 15 years or so as he performs this type of surgery which you're about to undergo. We've developed a lot of uh, expertise in this area and so the first thing I'd like to say to you and your family is that the vast majority of cases uh, go very smoothly now we do consider it to be a big operation you may can expect to be in theater maybe up to six hours or more but the vast majority of patients will be sitting up in bed in the intensive care unit uh, by evening time when we bring you to the operating theater complex we will bring you to an anesthetic room and it is here that we prepare you for surgery here you will have a number of drips put in into your arms or the side of your neck and it's here we perform the procedure called an epidural. You may have heard of epidurals for women for the relief of pain in labour and this is the sort of uh, technique which we'll be using for your operation. When you wake up you will be back in the intensive care unit and we will monitor you closely there for a few days and we will keep use the epidural during this time to keep all pain at bay.